Injecting nitrous is simple with Holly's Terminator X EFI system. We'll show you how we did it on this 1991 Mustang GT. For this project, we're using a basic dry nitrous setup from NOS that includes a 10 pound bottle. The Terminator X greatly simplifies adding nitrous to your Mustang because multiple add on features for nitrous are incorporated into the Terminator X. You don't need a throttle position switch, or a progressive nitrous controller, or a window switch, or a delay timer. All these devices are replaced by one accessory for the Terminator X, the Holly High Current Nitrous Solenoid Driver. The Holly High Current Nitrous Solenoid Driver can progressively control even big solenoids, like this NOS Pro Shot. To fill the fuel needs for a 150 shot, we replaced the factory 19 pound per hour injectors with these 36 pound per hour squirters and a 190 liter per hour intake pump, all from Holly. We started by removing the fuel tank. It's a huge help if you do this when the fuel tank is almost empty. An empty tank is much easier to handle. With the fuel tank down, we removed the factory fuel pump module. The Holly 190 liter per hour pump is a direct replacement for the factory pump. We disassemble the module and replace the factory pump with the higher output Holly pump. With the fuel pump module reassembled, we fished it back into the fuel tank and secured it with a fresh gasket and retaining ring. Old fuel pump harnesses like this can be trouble, we've learned this from experience, especially with a fuel pump that draws more current like the 190 liter per hour Holly that we have. To make sure our Fox didn't strand us on the side of the road, we replaced the old pump harness with a fresh one. Next, we removed the upper intake manifold so we could swap the injectors. It's pretty straightforward and only takes a few minutes, especially if you've done it before. We pulled the factory injectors, lubricated the O-rings of the Holly 36 pounders and installed them in the factory fuel rails. The dry nitrous injection nozzle goes in the intake tube, so we used a drill and the supplied tap to install it. We marked the outlet of the nozzle so we knew it was pointed in the right direction after installation. Now for the wiring. It's pretty simple, but we'll walk through it anyway. The Holly Terminator X harness has a handy input-output connector in the kick panel. We pulled the blank connector and installed the harness Holly supplies with the Terminator X. We used two wires on the harness, the white with red wire to arm the nitrous and the gray with red wire to trigger the nitrous solenoid. The white wire with a red stripe went to the arming switch which we hooked up to a 12 volt switched source. The gray wire with a red stripe went to the yellow wire on the solenoid driver harness. Here's where it comes out of the firewall and goes to the solenoid driver which we mounted nearby. Next we connected the orange wire from the solenoid driver harness to the battery. We used the fuse holder from the NOS relay harness and ran the orange wire along the firewall to the solenoid driver. Finally, the blue wire from the driver harness went to the nitrous solenoid with the remaining solenoid wire leading to ground. That's it for the wiring, so we tucked the remainder of the Holly input-output harness behind the kick panel. To reduce the risk of detonation, we swapped in spark plugs that were two heat ranges colder than stock. This might be overkill, but we wanted to be on the safe side. We finished up the nitrous system installation by running the nitrous feed line from the solenoid to the bottle, which we mounted in the trunk. The Terminator X software is where the magic happens. First, we opened up our configuration file. We needed to add the nitrous configuration features to the software. Before setting up the nitrous delivery options, we needed to tell the Terminator X how we wired up the arming switch and solenoid. That's via inputs and outputs. Since our arming switch was hooked up to 12 volts, we chose that option. The output is pulse width modulated, so we left that alone. Next, we needed to tell the Terminator X which wires to use via the pin map. 
we dragged the nitrous enable to pin A3, which is the white wire with red stripe, on the input-output harness. Clicking over to outputs, you can see here that all four of our outputs are already occupied. However, we don't have any electric fans, so we assigned fan number 2 from B11 and replaced it with the nitrous output. B11 is the gray wire with red stripe. Here you can see how we've assigned our inputs and outputs to the wires on the harness. Now we can start making adjustments to our nitrous delivery. We can choose what type of nitrous system we're using. And there are lots of options here, including secondary triggering. Here's what takes the place of the throttle micro switch or TPS switch, RPM window switch, and the delay switch. We can even cut nitrous off once boost comes in from a blower or a turbo. An air fuel ratio window uses the Terminator X's wideband oxygen sensor to further add safety. And if the run is interrupted, you can set how you want nitrous to re engage. Timing retard is also available. You can add a delay and either fix the timing or bring it in relative to the nitrous amount. Again, there are tons of useful options in here. The wideband oxygen sensor adds closed loop control for nitrous, so you can simply run an air fuel ratio target when on nitrous, just like you would naturally aspirated. Drag racers will appreciate the progressive control feature. You can ramp nitrous in over time or over RPM to soften the nitrous hit and maintain traction. Remember, without the Terminator X, all of these nitrous features would have needed add-on boxes that add wiring complications and tuning complexity. This is so much easier. If you recall, a dry nitrous system adds fuel via the fuel injectors, so here is where we set how much fuel is added as a function of nitrous duty cycle. Keep in mind that if you're running closed loop on nitrous, the oxygen sensor will make adjustments and override this function to some extent. In this example, we're ramping in 36 pounds per hour of fuel until the nitrous solenoid hits 80% duty cycle. That's it. Now it's time to hit the spray. Nitrous is the easiest way to add power, and as you can see, Holly's Terminator X makes it even easier.